Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the work we put in over the last couple of weeks, looking at panels and controllers and joining them together to get our first panel up and running in FPP. So today we've assembled a small uh, tune to type sign. Uh, this is made of six 64 by 32 P5 panels uh, for a total of 128 pixels wide by 96 high. Today we're going to get these up and running with the aid of an RPI P10 panel controller a hat from Hanson Electronics. Now, in addition to the panels, which I've already partially assembled, um, we need some data cables, the IDC cables to run from the panels to the hat. We need a power cable to run from our Meanwell power supply, again, to the panels. Second set of power cables to run from the Meanwell uh, to the hat, and they will be powering both the hat and the Raspberry Pi and of course our Meanwell power supply itself. So as you can see, I've already partially assembled this. I've used some acrylic uh, panel mounting strips and we've got a P10 fuse uh, already fitted. So power for the panels, as you'll remember, the, uh, the panel power cable is a Y cable, so they feed two panels at a time. And each one of those, one, one cable for each row, uh, has been brought back across to the fuse board uh, where we'll then apply the power to the, to the input of the fuse board. Now these panels consume around three and a half amps each on 100% brightness on full white. Um, so that equates to about seven amps per pair. Um, seven and a half amps is the nearest fuse, but that's a little bit close for my liking. Um, so I've run up to run these up to 10 amp fuses. So these three are all fused at 10 amps. And uh, we've got a spare output if we need one for something else, but we're not going to be using that today. So power cable wise, because we could theoretically be using up to about 21 amps, uh, three and a half times six is 21. I'm going to Connect this, uh, the power cable here is going to be uh, 12 gauge or 12 AWG cable. So let's get that in. Uh, this 12 AWG is rated at up to 30 amps for short distances. Uh, when you're building your panel, make sure that you get the right weight of power uh, of cable to suit your build. Um, I've seen lots of issues with people wondering why panels don't work very well um, and they've grossly underestimated the weight of the cable that's required. So there we go. So we've got 12 AWG cable there for that side of it. So that's the power for that done. Let's move that to one side. The last element we need to do on this uh, panel is connect up the data cables. So I'm going to connect one data cable up uh, to each row. And then much like pixels, the data is going to flow through each panel and then jump across the next panel and continue on its way. So it will come in, jump across, using the short IDCs that come with each cable, and then onto the second panel in each row. There we go. So let's just let's stand this back up, right? There we are. So let's get the Meanwell uh, connected up now. 
there we go. So I've already connected the main side. And let's connect the panel. So we're doing ground or V minus first of all. Okay. And then I'm going to do V plus or five volts. Okay. Now to keep things nice and tidy, I've put fork connectors um, and ferrules on the end of my cables, but obviously that's a, that's a nice to have and it's entirely up to you. I like to try and keep things nice and tidy and reduce the risk of stray bits of wire wandering about going places it shouldn't. There we go. And in with the second one. There we go. So that's my power cables all sorted out. So I'm just going to move that across to the side. So the Raspberry Pi that I've got here is a Pi 3B. It's uh, one of the slightly older boards now, but um, it's perfectly man enough for the job that we're going to be doing today. Um, you can tell it's a 3B because it's got the small aerial in the corner here, um, and it has got the larger um, silver case to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas uh, with the Pi lo logo on that the Pi 4 and uh, the 3B Plus and the Pi 4 have. There we go. So we'll just fit the hat. There we go. That's that sat on top. And we can now connect up uh, the power to it. So we've got 0 volts or ground. There we are, V minus. And we've got five volts. There we both, they both sit in there nicely. There we go. So that's power sorted out. So the power's coming in from the mean well and driving the hat and the Raspberry Pi underneath it. So now I'm going to bring in my data cables from each row. So the first row, the top row, is going to go to output number one, uh, CN1 on the hat here. Okay. Now you'll notice that each of these is keyed, so it has a slight uh, lump on the side of the connector, so it can only go in one way. So this is for the middle row, and last of all, the bottom row. There we are, so that's as complicated as that side of it gets. We'll just tuck these cables underneath, there we go, and we're and we're all ready to go. The Pi is powered, uh, data cables in, connected to the panel, the power has got power, or we'll have in a second, and we're good to go. So the, we've now turned on the power to the, to the power supply, and I'm gonna have a quick look at the side of the Pi, and we can see there that the red power LED is on, and we have a flashing green LED which shows that it's reading from the SD card. So we know that the Pi is now booting up. So let's grab a keyboard and mouse, and we can set about configuring it in just a moment. I suspect it will probably be ready, so we'll, we'll have give it a go. Now I've already partially configured the Pi. Um, I've done the bare bones install of FPP, and I've just set it up with a static IP address, 
Um, so I know where I'm going to find it uh, when we come to connect. There we are. So the Pi is now ready for us. It's up and running. Uh, let's set about configuring. So we're configuring LED panels, obviously. So let's go to Input Output Setup and Channel Outputs. We're then going to go to the LED Panels tab. And we're going to start configuring. So first job, tick the Enable button. And then we'll run through all of the different options. So our connection is a hat, cap, cape. The other options are color light or Linson, and it's not one of those. It's, a, it's definitely a hat on this one. And we're looking at the standard pinout for the Hanson Pi hats. If you had an Adafruit hat, then you want to check Adafruit um, because they have very slightly different wiring standards to everybody else. Moving across to the left-hand side then, we need to enter the number of panels in width and the number of panels in height of our layout. So we are two panels wide and we are three panels high. Now I'll skip auto layout for a second and then we'll come back to it in just a moment. Single panel size, ours are indoor P5s, they are 64 by 32, and they are 1 16th scan. Now, if you're not sure, have a look on the back of your panel, and it should tell you uh, the scan rate. There's, there should be a long number on the back of the panel, and in the middle of there somewhere, it, it will say either 4S for fourth scan, for quarter scan, uh, one or 8S for 1 8th, or 16S for 16, etc. So we were 64 by 32, 1 16th. Our model start is top left. Our panel gamma, we're going to leave at 2.2. If you find you want to adjust the contrast, um, adjust the colours slightly, uh, you can have a play with that, but I just tend to leave it alone at 2.2. Brightness, I'm going to leave at 100%. Um, I've got a fairly bright studio light over there, um, so we're going to need full power for you to, to see it properly. Uh, panel interleave, I'm going to leave as off. Uh, on P5s, you normally don't need to play with that. P10s uh, from different vendors, you might end up playing with panel interleave to get it, get the whole thing looking right. Okay, and the color depth. Um, so that's the number of bits uh, in the color signal. So the more granularity that you want in your colors, the greater the depth. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna leave that at eight bits. Now, out of the box, FPP defaults to setting all of the panels exactly the same. So they're all set to output number one and panel number one with the default color definitions. Now, if you left it at that, it would mean all six panels end up displaying exactly the same thing, um, one sixth of your picture. But we don't want that. In times gone by, we'd have had to go through every single panel and change output number and panel number to match. So our Output one that we're using for our top row would be correct. But then we would have panel one on the right and we'd have to change the next one to panel two. The second row we'd have to change to output two, etc. But fortunately, um, we asked for a feature request on this a, a little while ago and uh, the FPP gurus have come up trumps and we now have this auto layout option. So we click that and we hit yes. Here we go. And if I now scroll down, we can see that the layout has been properly uh, populated for us. 
So row one is output one, row two is output two, row three output three. The left hand column is all panel two because our inputs are on the right hand side here and then they move across to the left and panel one on the right column. So that's the left hand side all done. Moving across to the right hand side, our start channel here is number one. Now this will need to match whatever you have set up in X lights. I normally try and leave my matrices um, right at the beginning of my X lights config because the pixel counts don't change. We don't move things about on panels really. So they can stay put at the beginning and then we can mess around with all our pixel strings underneath them um, quite happily afterwards. So that's my start channel. Our total channel count is 36864. Um, a quick check of the numbers. We've got 2048 pixels on each of these panels. Uh, multiply 2048 by 6 gives us 12288. Times that by 3. Uh, once, for R, once for red, once for green, once for blue on each pixel gives us 36864. So that's correct. Our default panel color order is RGB, red, green, blue. That means um, when we're sending data packets, the first one would, the first uh, piece of data will be for the red pixel, the second piece for the green, and the third for the blue. On these panels, uh, these are RGB panels, but other, other vendors may vary. I've certainly seen BGR panels um, and there's others out there. So you might need to change, but we'll demonstrate at the end of this how uh, you tell what you've got, whether it's right or not, um, and then how to change it if you need to. GPIO slowdown. As it says there, if you've got one of the older, slower pies, um, then you might need to have it up, up towards zero um, or maybe one. If you've got a newer pie, such as a, three, uh, a 3B, uh, 3B plus or pie four, then you're probably going to want it on five. Um, it just controls the rate that the data is fed out of the GPIO pins and into the hat. Um, the faster the Pi, we need to tell it not to quite go so quick on the GPIO. And the last one is the CPU PWM. Now, the only hat that I know of that uses CPU PWM is the Hanson MFC hat uh, that runs pixels and panels. Um, if you don't check that, it'll either run pixels or panels, but it won't do both at the same time. So you need to check that for the MFC hat. Um, otherwise, leave it alone um, unless otherwise instructed. So there we go. We've got everything set up there in FPP now. So all we need to do is to return to the top and there's a handy button up on the side here now, which is really useful, which will take us back to the top and it wants us to restart FPPD. Um, now I do need to hit save before we do that. So let me just bash that. and then I'm gonna restart FPPD. Now, FPP sometimes decides to reboot at this point. Um, doesn't tell you it's going to, it just does. So if it doesn't come back immediately, um, as it doesn't seem to be this time, then that's because FPP has decided to reboot. So it's having a little think about life. And as suspected, our FPP has rebooted. Um, and I can tell that because we haven't got the time visible up here at the moment. Um, so it's not yet connected to a network time server uh, and updated the time. Uh, I'm sure that will come back in in just a moment. So our panels are all configured. Uh, time now to test them. And we have another handy new feature in uh, FPP6, which is this test pattern feature. So if I enable that, there we go. We can see that 
A, all our panels are working, and B, that we've configured them correctly in the channel output side, um, down at the bottom on the layout. It's telling us, the first digit is telling us the row number, and the second digit is telling us the panel number. So our top ones are all starting with a one, second row starts with a two, third row with a three, all the left-hand columns starting with a one, and the right-hand columns are all twos. So these panels are all configured nicely. They're doing the job beautifully. Um, it's a little bit confusing in that from the wiring side, these are panel ones and these are panel twos. But on the display side, one is on the left, two is on the right. And that will continue the wider you go. So our panels all look to be up and connected and happy. Let's turn off the pattern test. And we're going to go and make sure now that our colours are set in the correct order to make sure that our panel order for RGB is actually right for these panels. So I'm going to go to status control, display testing. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit to solid color test pattern. Now, I just want to, I'm just going to drop B back to zero, G to zero, and R is at 255. So if I enable fill color of red, and then I go to test mode and turn that on, there we go. Our panel is lighting up at red. So that's, that's good. So red is correct. If I scroll back down, now I've enabled, oh, I've got to turn red off, green on, and yep, our panel is green. And if I enable blue, then happy days, our panel has gone blue. Oh, the midge thing. I think I got it. Right, that panel has gone blue. So our RGB settings are all correct. And I can turn display test mode off. And, and we're all good and dandy. Now, if my uh, color order was wrong, uh, let's go and, and make it wrong. And then you'll see what happens. So I'm going to change RGB to BGR, uh, reversing the red and the blue. There we go, we've saved that. Restart. There it is. If I now go to status and display testing again, and I set it to red, then turn that on, turn that on. We're going to get blue instead. So you can quickly whiz through and check your colors are correct. So red was blue, green is green, and blue is going to be red. There we are. So that demonstrated uh, what happens if you get the colors the wrong way around. So I'm going to go back and put it back to where it should be. Lovely. Um, RGB and save. Restart FPPD. Let it have a think. There it goes. Um, so while I spot it, we've got the date and time sat in the top now uh, because it's back online and it's connected to an NTP source. Um, right, status, status, and display testing. And then the last one I wanted to do, we can either do a cycle um, and that will cycle through red, green, and blue, and so forth. 
or we can do a chase and that probably not completely visible for you but each pixel is just alternating through red green and blue there we go so our panel is all set up FPP is configured and we're ready now to move on to setting up X lights um, applying uh, a small sequence and then pushing it out to FPP so that's what we're going to be doing next week um, I hope you've enjoyed this one as with the rest and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care, have fun, see you soon.